Every new edition of Spectre Layers comes with workflow enhancements that act in harmony with all tools and processes. Here are some of the version 12 highlights. Spectre Layers 12 introduces the ability to comprehensively edit and process content on multiple layers at once, and this is a feature that will appeal to all users. Listen to these three stems played together. We have bass guitar, bass effects, and a guitar track that have all picked up the same artifact at once. Let's solo the tracks. First the bass. Now the bass effects. And now the guitar. Now here I'm shift clicking to select all three layers. They all contain the same error in the same place. Over in the tools panel, I'm selecting the eraser tool. And now when I drag the eraser tool over the defect, the problem disappears from all three layers at once. Here's the result. And as you can see here in the new edition, the defect has been removed from all three layers using edit multiple layers at once. The cut to and copy to actions now allow you to target any layer within a project. Here I'm making a selection on a layer and then moving up to the edit menu and selecting cut special, cut to. A dialog box opens and here I can select the target layer from a list that shows every layer in the project. I'll choose a new layer that I created for this demo. Click OK and the cut is made. Here it is on its new layer. On my next selection, now I have the option to select the same destination. Once a target layer is established, you can immediately apply additional actions to it. This streamlines multi-layer editing workflows, reducing the number of steps needed to move and manipulate content. Frequency selection has been improved across the board to track narrow frequencies more accurately. Listen to this clarinet sample. This will be our use case. Let's take a step back to Spectra Layers 11 and review how the frequency selection tool behaved. Here, I'm selecting the fundamental harmonic. If I go off track and lose the target, there's no way to pull it back. I have to start over and remember to end the selection at the place where it drifted from the target. Here, I'm moving the mouse to the left, but as you can see, the selection isn't changing. Let's take a look at the improvements in the new edition. Here I'm selecting the tool and, first of all, the tool is tracking a lot better. And now, when I get to a place where it goes off the track a little, I can back up and the selection can be truncated to a point that I choose. Here I'm holding down the shift key while I continue making my selection. Here I'm backing up again and again and now I'm completing the selection. These enhancements make it easier to perform precise, frustration-free spectral edits, especially when working with obscured or shifting harmonics. Extending the improvements in frequency selection, the Harmonics Selection Tool introduces a new, more intuitive way to select harmonics. No parameter tweaking required. Listen to this trombone layer. In Spectra Layers 11, the Harmonics Selection Tool defaults to selecting only harmonics that occur above the selected harmonic. In this mode, the tool will not intelligently seek the entire range of available harmonics. Now in version 12, with the improved tool, I can select a frequency and as you can see, no harmonics are detected automatically as long as I stay within the selected frequency band. The detection and series selection happens when I move the mouse up and down. With a little exploration, I eventually hit the sweet spot that selects all the harmonics, and as you can see, the tool seeks both up and down the range. This frees you to operate on the most accessible harmonic on the spectrograph and then seek up and down to lock in the series. Transient selection in the new edition is now more accurate and flexible. Listen to this kick drum sample. The tool now locks onto the target with greater precision and detects the gaps with more accuracy. Now this results in cleaner, more focused selections and reduces the time spent on manual fine tuning. Here in the edit menu, I'm choosing cut special, cut to, and in the dialog, I'm choosing to cut the content to a new layer. Here's the kick with no transient. And here's the transient. And here I've renamed the two new layers, and in the file menu, I'm choosing Export Layers. 
I've created a folder for the WAV files to land, and now here they are, ready to be used in any way I like. In my DAW, I might try putting time-based effects on the transients in isolation. In Spectra Layers 12, you can resize active selections and apply an edit fades directly on the spectrograph. And here I have a rectangular selection on a synth arpeggio. I'll play it as a loop and show you how I can edit the selection on the fly. First, I'll adjust the start and end points so that the selection plays in time. And now here's a fade in. And a fade out. And of course, frequency domain fading is included. Here, I'm adjusting the low range for a high pass effect, and I can bring down the highs too if I want to. And you're always free to go back and make changes. Here, I'm making the fade in a little bit longer. Being able to work directly on the spectrograph like this allows you to make precise adjustments in real time that streamline your workflow and help you achieve exactly the results you want with more ease and accuracy than ever. Volume envelopes can now be rendered in place after which they are automatically removed from the project. Additionally, volume envelope visualization has been standardized to align with typical DAW conventions. Envelopes now appear consistently regardless of waveform zoom level. The VST3 effects module can now display multiple plugin interfaces simultaneously. Listen to this chiming guitar. Okay, now here I'm in the VST3 effects module with two plugins loaded, and as you can see, both are visible and tweakable. So now you can interact and preview entire effects chains at once, streamlining your workflow and making it easier to fine tune complex effect setups in real time. Now here we have an updated transcription module. I'll put it to work on this AI generated voice. The unmixed transcription module in Spectra Layers 12 has been greatly enhanced, delivering transcription quality that is twice as accurate and supporting twice as many languages. High quality mode is now available across all languages, enabling more reliable and precise transcriptions for a wider range of projects and multilingual workflows. The unmixed transcription module in Spectra Layers 12 has been greatly enhanced, delivering transcription quality that is twice as accurate and supporting twice as many languages. High quality mode is now available across all languages, enabling more reliable and precise transcriptions for a wider range of projects and multilingual workflows. And all we needed here was one easy nomenclature edit to arrive at a perfect transcript. In ARA mode, selecting Group by Track from the Spectra Layers Clip menu displays all ARA engaged clips on any selected DAW track, both as layers and as project tabs. Here I have 10 clips spanning two tracks on the Cubase timeline. Now I've selected them all, and here I'm calling up Spectra Layers in the Extension field on the Cubase info line. All the clips are now active in Spectra Layers, and every clip has its own tab. The Spectra Layers clip menu defaults to no grouping, but this can be changed in the Spectra Layers Preferences panel. Here I'm selecting Group by Track. Now the tabs display Cubase tracks and all associated layers are displayed in the Layers panel. I can click on the tabs to display all the clips in a given track, or I can select the track in Cubase. The View Inspector Layers then automatically switches to the selected track. This enables faster navigation and streamlined editing by limiting the view to clips located on individual tracks. Batch processing now supports a custom name scheme, allowing you to define folder and file names generated during batch processing. And here's how it works. To get an idea about what kind of options you have, activate the tooltips in the Interface tab in Preferences, and then hover over the Name Scheme line. I'll show you two different ways to structure the batch processor output. On my desktop, I've created a folder into which the batch processed files will land. Here I'm simply dragging the new folder over to the output folder line and dropping it there. Now the destination is set. This feature is especially useful when doing batch processing on whole songs, or when working in the unmixed component module, for example. 
and other modules that generate new content. Here I'm sharing the screen with my source and destination folders. You can see that I have three songs ready for processing. Here I'm dragging them into the batch processor window. The name scheme is set to file name followed by layer. And here's the process, unmix song, all instrument boxes checked, fast quality mode. Let's run the process. And now the songs start showing up in the processed files folder as the batch process progresses. After the entire process is finished, we now have our song stems organized by song. And now here I'm starting over. Here on the name scheme line, I've reversed the order so that layer comes first, followed by file name. Run the process again, and now in the processed files folder, the batch processed files are grouped by instrument. With new workflows that appeal to editors in every field, Join Spectral Layers on its journey at the vanguard of spectral music production, sound design, restoration, and repair. We hope you enjoyed this video. Spectral Layers delivers state-of-the-art spectral processing for editors in every field. Subscribe to the Steinberg YouTube channel and learn more about how you can leverage this application in your production workflow.